We have a big news day, one that I don't think we really expected, but also one that's not particularly surprising. When your basketball team has won seven games and it's January 25th, the head coach is always going to be in trouble, even if you knew that basketball team wasn't going to be very good. And ultimately, the Washington Wizards decide this morning, and the timing is funky as all get out, and we'll get to it, but decide this morning that Wes Unseld Jr. is no longer the best man for the role. They move him to a front office advisory role, lots of flexibility. Uh, In short, I would say they picked up a contract option on him in October uh, that they probably had to pick up based off a deadline. Um, I don't know that for sure, but that's how those things typically work. They pick up the option. They're going to have to pay him. His, they like him personally. His insight is valuable. He's not the right man to be in the lead seat right now. And so they move him to this front office advisory role. And really, um, it's actually fairly simple why. You, it, maybe it's a slightly more complex than, hey, dummy, they're 7-36. and 36. No kidding, they fired their coach. But there, there was two main things that had to happen this year, and only one of the two is happening. And the two things were not defined by me or anybody else outside the organization. They were defined by Wes Unseld and, of course, Will Dawkins and Michael Winger. But here was Wes Unseld Jr. on set with me at Wizards Media Day describing exactly what needed to happen for the Zardos in 2024. You know, and that might not translate to wins, um, but you want teams to walk away from playing the Wizards and know that, you know what, we we had to play to beat this team. Uh, We have to compete at the highest level. Um, you want our guys to enjoy competing, you know, enjoy the t- connect, the connectivity that it takes to be a really good team. Of course, you know, we'll have to find small measures. You know, I think we've, we've measured some things internally, but to, to see the day-to-day improvement, the week-to-week improvement, you know, the month-to-month improvement individually and collectively, I think we keep stacking those. We're, we'll be heading in the right direction. The good, the good news for Wes Unsell Jr. was that a lot of individual pieces were developing. Um, Bilal Koulibaly has been a bit of a revelation and there's a chance that he is extremely good like if he Giannis is obviously a pipe dream but the Giannis-y stuff he does the way he affects the game on the defensive end as a rookie the way that he has potential to grow not only uh, bigger and stronger like you know physicality wise muscularly the way that Giannis went from a bean pole to a brick house. But the fact that he, like Giannis, came here at just 19 years old and theoretically could grow upwards. He could go from 6'9 to 6'10, 6'11, or even a, a seven footer. Like if he does that, then amazing. If can he have the vision and the type of things that Giannis does? Probably not. That's it's an incredible ask. Giannis is one of one in the history of the league in terms of his exact mix of size, speed, and skill. But could you get something that's a pretty damn good impression out of Koulibaly that maybe is even good enough to be the best player on a championship team? Maybe more likely he's your second best player when eventually this thing pops off if it gets there in the way that we all hope that it does. That's great. Denny Advia having a very, very good year. Kyle Kuzma is more consistent than he was last year, continuing to play the the number one role, even if he's probably best suited as a two or three on a true championship team. But he's getting better. And all of that stuff, you can't separate from Wes Unsell Jr. and say, like, hey, some whatever he's doing on some level is working in that department. However, the first part of his answer was not daily, monthly, weekly improvement. It was competitiveness. And the Washington Wizards this year have largely been non-competitive. They have, at times, and especially the last couple of weeks, I mean, their roster's terrible. And we know that. That is not, a, that, that is not something that is Wes Unsell Jr.'s fault. It's not... This bad, though. And so there are times where you just go, hey, you don't have a second big. That's a problem. And since they addressed that with the Marvin Bagley trade, they've been much better. They've been more competitive, but more competitive off of getting blown out by 35 once a week isn't good enough. They're better than that. And while I think a lot of the, or not a lot of, I don't want to put too much on Jordan Poole. I do think that there's a decent amount of success this season that's not happening because they were banking on Jordan Poole refining a really high level of form that he is nowhere close to approached. Um, then, and like those of 
those people like me, like Mia Culpa, I've said this when we, the rare times we've talked about the Wizards over the last couple of months because they've been so um, non-newsy, let's say. Um, I definitely thought that Poole was capable, and he clearly is not there yet. Hopefully he finds that at some point. He's still young, um, and I don't say this meanly or whatever. Like I, Everything you still hear out of, out of there is that uh, he works his tail off, and he's a great teammate. He's just not a very good NBA basketball player at the moment. Certainly not a number one option who I thought could lead the league in scoring because I thought he was going to be unleashed. So certainly that's hurt them a lot. But even with that, like the inability to find a, a good rotation and, and to ever seemingly hit the right button late in games. There have been games that they've closed with the starters, games they've closed with the bench, games they've closed with mix of guys, and it always seems no matter what, what West chooses – it's not the right move. And eventually you go, is it because there's not one available or is it because he doesn't have the pulse of the team? And I do think that you've also started to hear a little bit more grumbling and groaning out of the locker room. And sometimes it's just you need a new voice. And I know there's a lot of new players and, and all of that stuff, but I think that they have gotten to a point where you have a good locker room, a locker room that's pretty tight actually by, by all accounts, but one that is not maximizing its current potential, even if you don't really care if you win, and you know you're not going to win in any kind of major way, but what you don't want when you talk about habits and you talk about culture and all of that stuff is anything to fester. And so what you do is go, hey, Wes, this ain't really your fault, but there is a level of accountability and there is a level of, whether it's sternness, whether it's... uh being a little bit more willing to try stuff like he hasn't really changed his starting lineup all year and he does have the authority to coach this team even if a lot of this is coming uh you know organizationally there's been some decisions made that that aren't at the coaching level that are at the Will Dawkins general manager at the Michael Winger president of basketball operations level like there's there's coaching level stuff that hasn't hasn't gone well and eventually you got to, especially when you're in this phase of, we got to try stuff. Like we're, we're in the experiment phase. You got to experiment. And whether that's Bilal in the starting lineup, whether that is splitting Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole, and maybe some of that Wes was waiting for the trade deadline and ultimately he's not going to get there. It's just become very clear that as the, the consistency of competitiveness hasn't grown. The ability to string together multiple wins, the ability to not get blown out by 40 once a week, the ability to stop blowing fourth quarter leads, you know, a game like last night against Minnesota where you're kind of in it the entire time. Like if that was, that was your season fine, but every time they got within like six or seven Minnesota, would just stretch it back out to double digits and the inability to break through now 40 games into this season, 43 games into this season over the halfway point is what ultimately costs Wes Unzel Jr. his job. I will say, Wes is a wonderful person. I have thoroughly enjoyed Wes uh, coming on the show. I hope that there is a way that we can have him in the future. Like other shows have former coaches on, and if the Wizards get good in a couple of years and Wes isn't coaching somewhere else and he's decided to take a different track with his career and he's doing media or whatever and we can get him on the show regularly to talk about a Wizards team that matters, I would be thrilled with that. I, I am a big Wes Unseld fan, and I have talked real basketball with him. Like, off the record, we're, we're catching up, and we, we, at, we talk, and, like, that dude can talk ball. He's really smart. But implementing is different. Coaching is different. And that, you talk to NBA people, and they'll tell you the six inches between the second chair and the head coaching job is the biggest six inches in the NBA. And for whatever reason here in Washington – it never caught for him, and today's not a day that, like, today's a day that both needed to happen, but is not a day of celebration. Um, Wes Unsell Jr. is a good man, who lost his job, who deserved, based off merit, to lose his job, but I hate that it didn't work out for him, and that's where we are uh, today. We'll keep diving into the why as well. Ava Wallace has a great beat on it, is, after all, her beat, 4.30 today, she will join us, and then She'll pop on over into the press room, and you'll probably hear Ava's voice again because coming up live at 5 o'clock, Michael Winger and Will Dawkins will address the press at Capital One Arena, and we will carry it your li here live for you, of course, on your home for Wizards basketball, the Team 980. Next, though, your calls, 301-230-0980, your reaction to Wes Unsell Jr., 
getting fired today, relocated to the front office for the Wizards. Your calls next. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.